Hi everyone, Ashley Harwood here. I just wanted to say, um, I know that I've been off of the YouTube scene for a little while now, and I would like to thank you all for hanging in there with me and for being patient. I have been focusing on some new, uh, very exciting parts of my business. So look for an announcement coming up very soon. Um, and without further delay, here's the next video. Hi, I'm Ashley Harwood. I'm here with my friend Chris Rober, and we are in western New York in the cold in January. <laughs> <laughs> in this video, we're going to be talking about honey. Uh, specifically extracting honey. Uh, the bees are tucked away for the winter, and I've got about 100 pounds of honey still in the frame that uh, we need to extract and, and jar up. All right. And I hear that this has something to do with the lathe. So let's get this thing started and see how it all happens. Yeah, should be fun. Okay, so I just wanna understand a little bit more about what's going on here. This thing here is full of honey. Yep, so that's a fully capped frame of, of honey. Okay. And then this is gonna go into here. This is the extractor. And we're gonna slide the frames into here. And then when we turn the lathe on, it'll spin. And the spinning is actually gonna use centrifugal force to send the honey out to the edges. Yep. So all we have to do is uncap each frame, mm -hmm. drop it in there, and then uh, the lathe will do the rest of the work. So does it matter which side we cut these caps off on? So actually you cut them off on both sides and then you drop it in the extractor. Mm -hmm. And when you're spinning it out, you turn them halfway through the process. Mm -hmm. Then you can reuse the frames for next season. Oh wow, okay. So are the bees actually building up all of these little individual honeycomb things? So we start with one of these frames mm -hmm. and I, I purchase my wax and I drop them in just like this. Mm -hmm. And the bees will build out each cell Mm -hmm. And from there, they, they fill it with nectar and matures into honey, and then they cap it. Okay. So they're building their own, like creating their own wax? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So I understand there's a difference between the fall harvest and the spring harvest? Yeah, and actually there's, there's a difference in honey from week to week and, and day to day almost. Uh, it depends on your locality. Mm -hmm. um, Whatever is blooming is what your bees are going to gather. Mm -hmm. And that influences the, the flavor, the color, you know, every aspect of the honey is dependent on the flowers. What's your favorite honey? Um, I'm pretty partial to the fall stuff. It tastes mm -hmm. more like caramel to me than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit darker, a little bit richer. So that's, what's, uh, that's what we're going to extract today. Cool. So can we uh, take a look at what's inside <laughs> here? Yeah, we'll uh, use your scraper here. See if I can just catch the corners off some of these. We actually have a hot knife that works a lot better than this that we'll get out in just a second. Ooh. And so you can see there, there's almost two different colors, you know, lighter up here and then darker. Can I taste it? Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's cut some frames and go from there. Yeah. So how can we have all of these different colors in here? What's so, with the gradient? So the difference between them is, is just the, the nectar that the bees are collecting at the time. So I think I read on this box that I put it on in July. So up here that's beginning of goldenrod, you know, maybe a little bit of knotweed, um, but that doesn't mean necessarily that they filled it in July either. Mm -hmm. So we've got some what I would probably consider to be clover honey or, you know, wildflower honey down here, the real mm -hmm. light stuff. This dark stuff, however, though, is is a Japanese knotweed honey. Um, knotweed? Yeah, so that's that's actually an invasive invasive species up here, um, but it makes really good honey. So <laughs> it's a, yeah. kind of a double-edged sword. 
but so that's uh that's why there's all the different colors in there mm -hmm. drop it in the extractor and yeah. spin them out All right, let's go. Turn so it up a little bit. Gonna turn it up to where you can see the strings of honey coming out. Mm-hmm. Or I see a little bit. Turn it up just a little more. So, I mean, you can see down in each one of these frames now, there's a little bit of residual honey left on, on these ones. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably because they sat in the frames for a, for a little longer than they should have and they crystallized a little bit, but that uh, doesn't, doesn't do anything to the quality of the honey. But yeah, so these ones are done. And uh, save the bees a couple weeks worth of work and set them aside. Mm -hmm. Just lift it? Yep. All right. That's so cool looking. So just dig right in, huh? That's all been filtered twice now, so it should be ready for jarring. And just like we could see the difference in colors in the, in the cells themselves, you'll be able to see a different color in the honey. We have summer honey and we have fall honey. Notice the difference? You should taste them. Well, I've been tasting this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll taste a little of this one if you hold that. Is finger okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's your it's your jar to take home anyway. Oh, is it? For biscuits or cornbread or whatever you make down there. Mm. So can you taste the difference? Yeah, so I think this one has a little bit more of like a floral taste. Yeah. Yeah. And then that one's more caramely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Both delicious. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this and how did you get into it? So I started about 20 years ago, not to age myself, but I was eight at the time. Uh-huh. Um, actually, my neighbors had a swarm of bees in their backyard and my uncle was a beekeeper mm -hmm. and he came to uh, catch them and I suited up and been doing it ever since. So how long does a hive survive? Do they have a lifespan or do they just keep? Nope, they kind of keep cy cycling through and, and you can replace queens and you can facilitate them and you know be as hands off or as hands on as you want to be. Facilitate them? Yeah. So you can introduce a new queen and they'll actually fight it out and the stronger one Why is... would you want to do that? <laughs> that seems so disruptive. <laughs> if, if a queen isn't laying well or if she's not producing, you want a younger, stronger queen in there or else your, your winters or your hives won't make it through the winter up here. Okay. How do they make it through the winter? Cause, um, <laughs> because you're barely I, making I it I would not do all right out there. Yeah. <laughs> so right now they're actually in, in a ball inside the hive. Uh -huh. And actually I think it's about 87 degrees in the center of that. Really? So it'd be. That's nice. Yeah. How many pounds of honey do you get a year from these 14 hives? It depends on the year. Um, but there's, I mean, we'll probably do about 100 pounds tonight. Um, so probably a couple hundred pounds on the year. Um, and it just varies. You know, I leave a lot of honey on the hives just to make sure that they've got enough to make it through. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> it all depends. Okay, how do you just like, I would imagine that if you're just walking up and you're just carrying off 100 pounds of honey, that you're gonna have a lot of angry bees. Mm -hmm. So what I actually do is, is I, take the box off and I come through with a leaf blower 
<laughs> and, I, and I blow the, the bees out the back, and then I load the boxes on the truck, and I leave. Is this common? Yeah. A leaf blower? Yeah. All right. There's also Gas one. Gas powered or electric, or does it matter? <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay. Strong enough to remove bees. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be around for that. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they're not fond. Mm -hmm. How do you know when the honey is ready to harvest? So as long as you're doing normal inspections, so you should be, you know, inspecting your bees every week, every two weeks. You and know, by it, that you mean, like, do you actually pull the frames out to yep. inspect them? Okay. Yeah, so you're looking for mites and, you know, pollen and nectar and make sure that everything's going well. Mm -hmm. So then you'll know, you know, if there's a, an abundance of honey and then you can just add on another box and at the end of the spring season or summer season, you pull then and then at the end of fall. So twice a year? Yeah, I typically do my harvest twice a year. Okay. Thank you so much everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I do hope that you'll hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And thank you so much, Chris, for <laughs> having us here and for teaching us all about bees. If y'all are interested in learning more about bees um, and in learning more about Chris and what he does, of course, there's always links down below the video. See y'all next time. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, uh, please don't forget to hit subscribe and check the little notifications bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Um, of course, there are tons of links down below the video uh, to my website and Chris's Instagram page if you want to learn more. Um, also, I would like to say thank you so much to all of my Patreon members. Um, your support really helps to continue to provide um, you know, high quality video and photos for all of the social media accounts. So thank you so much. If you're interested in more of a behind the scenes look of my business and, and what's going on, what kind of projects I'm working on, um, we do have a link down below the video for the Patreon page as well. And at the $10 level, you will see receive advanced notification of when I'm going to be posting my classes. You will know 24 hours before everybody else uh, when these classes are going public. I would especially like to give a big shout out to my top tier patrons. Steve Snyder, Andrew Nadell, Chris Cairns, Chris Jones, David Matheson, Andrew Mobius, Carrie Carpenter, Charles Saki, Dalby Rohn, Duke Bloy, Jacob Jackson, Jeffrey Bishop, Jim Tate, John McDevitt, Carl Schickles, Patrick Walker, Richard Swoboda, Robert Hunt, AKA Mr. Bodog, and Stephen Roberts. Thank you so much. Your support is greatly appreciated. All right, I'm back to work. So till next time guys, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> it's so good. It's